welcome back to Sweetwater Place. Cat here. Okay, it is time for me to check in for my, um, what is this, declutter challenge for the month of January. Um, I've been trying to post every Friday and yesterday I didn't get it up on Friday because I was still working. Um, now, I at the beginning of the week, I started with, you know, the rest of my closet in my office and some other little places and I was decluttering and I thought, Kat, what are you doing? You're just prolonging the inevitable, which is the biggie, which is the garage. The garage was just getting out of control, really out of control. So I needed to actually just focus on that this week. And so I did and I did that little by little and I got my 30 things plus like a bazillion things um, every day. And I'm not done with it yet, but I'm done with three quarters of the garage. And I have to say that I am so proud of myself um, because we got rid of a lot of stuff, um, whether we th we're throwing it away or we're giving it away. I made a huge difference, uh, but I'm not done yet. So I did most of the garage on, I want to say the whole family side, but on the side that is just like my husband's work stuff, we're really going to have to take some time and go through that. It's separated by a wall of shelves. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, what I'm actually going to do is buy some shades or curtains or something to kind of like hang on this side so that I don't see all the work stuff all the time. Because um, when I, he has to have all that stuff, but it does raise my anxiety when I go into the garage and if I see things getting a little out, you know, crazy. Um, but we're going to be doing that side together because I don't want to be throwing anything away that's very important to him. So I will show you what this week's decluttering uh, business looks looks like. All right, I started cleaning out a little storage closet that we have upstairs, actually a large storage closet, and I found some things from a very old class that um, I taught, and I used to teach uh, mixed media art and photography, and a lot of this stuff is still good. You can use it for different things. These little shoe stretchers here, we would use the flat surfaces to um, transfer mixed media images. Um, they actually worked really well. These are um, cardstock here. I can donate that. I've got a bunch of that. I've got some little magnifying glasses and then a bunch of sheet protectors here that are like brand new so people could use that for whatever um and so these things are reusable cleaning here cleaning out the cards and more craft stuff from my office supplies so so far i'm putting some things away over here but this whole pile right here is going in the trash and i have quite a few things i have way over than 33 30 things in here for today. And I also found a really old phone, so I'm gonna see if that works. My finished uh, rest of the closet here. Um, a lot of things I've taken out, thrown out. Put a few things in the giveaway pile. This is my um, trash can full of stuff that's going in the garbage. And um, that's it. Hubby gets me <clears throat> a lot of flowers. He gives me a lot of flowers and the temptation is to keep all of the vases that the flowers come in. So I've got 12 of them here. There are more. So, um, so far I've got 12 things in this box and I'm going to be donating these more ones. things. I've got a bunch of glass trays here, all perfectly good. I just don't use them anymore and some molds. So there's 20 things in here. I'm going to try to get 10 more things in the box I'm for 30. I'm not going to include this bag of rags in the box because they're not good enough to give away. These towels, I actually, they're clean, but I kept a bag of rags because I thought, oh, I could always use rags for, I don't know, some project in the garage or something, except I never use them. We never, ever use them. So here they are, and I just wanted to show you them. This is going to be like my next 10. It's over 10 extra items. So there's 30 right here, and I'm just getting rid of these. Garage. I am tackling this big, huge plastic box 
and I, it is just full of cleaners. And so I'm gonna go through those and see what I can toss and what I can keep. 30 more things in the garage that are going to be disposed of. Throwing away this, um, it's a, I don't wanna say it's a silk plant, but it's a fake plant. I don't know what it's made out of. It does have a cute little basket. I don't know if that's worth keeping maybe, but the thing is, I think it's hooked together is that I wash these every now and then because they collect so much dust. And sometimes I try to dust them and then when they get really bad, I just take them outside and hose them down and wash them. But I never seem to get everything off of them. And since they collect so much dust and we have so many people that are just allergic to allergens, I don't know why I'm just collecting them. I'm just going to get rid of my fake plants and keep real ones if I have real ones. Other than that, no more dust collectors. I'm getting rid of it. Much. <laughs> Loading up the back of this truck with giveaway stuff and it is going to be completely full. Giveaway stuff here. So this is going to be given away. And all of this is garbage. This is all garbage from the garage, pretty much. Completely filled up. This is all the giveaway stuff. And this is from inside the house as well as the garage. So I have to say, I am extremely proud of myself for all of the work that I did decluttering the garage this week, as well as other areas, but the garage has been the biggie. Um, I'm not done yet, as I said before, but, uh, but it, it, a huge difference has been made. Um, if I showed it to you before, it was really, you guys, it was crazy. You would have thought that I was living in a hoarder house or something, which is, it was just a garage, trust me. It was just a garage. It just got really crazy and we just haven't had the time. And when you don't have the time and stuff gets thrown in there, one thing gets piled on top of the other and it starts really looking hoardy. I wanna show you this book that I bought a while back, it was really interesting me um, back then. I found a documentary on this and, and lo and behold, I ended up finding the book that it was talking about. Life at home in the 21st century, 32 families opened their doors. And so these uh, this group of people who made the documentary wasn't trying to show how these people were hoarding or you know trying to shame them or anything like that. What they did was they just wanted to count everything that people had in their homes and just kind of like show a really fascinating view of you know what kinds and how much stuff people had and how they keep it and they do a really good job about not being you know judgmental in it um, but what I thought was really interesting was, you know, they do um, just frankly point out some, you know, very obvious facts of like this picture here, how people were keeping, you know, different things on top of things. This is a washer and dryer and it's got a coffee pot and a bunch of food on it and they're using it for food storage. So it is interesting how people and over here we have a pile of stuff that's pushing in on this uh, cupboard here, the shelf that was meant to keep things. And it's just interesting how people are keeping things here. They talk about, you know, how interesting the culture of stockpiling is and, you know, how we end up really buying more food than we need to at one time. People do this for different reasons, right? And right now I have a no spend challenge for this month also where I'm trying to use up my pantry. Um, of course, this week was a little bit more pricier than the other weeks. I didn't do so well this week because I'm running out of everything and I kind of had to replenish some things. But <clears throat> even when it comes down to like the refrigerator, how much stuff do we keep 
on the refrigerator, how many different objects, and you know, they counted everything, and people were really surprised. Look at this fridge. <laughs> Did you ever have a fridge that looked like that? Um, people were really surprised to find out how much stuff they kept. This is somebody's garage. I can relate to the garage getting a little overdone, uh, bicycles and whatnot. Here we have a mass in the garage again. And what's odd is that when we keep our garages in you know, certain places like this, we know what's inside. It makes sense to us. Look at this. This one, I could never work at a desk like this where I had stuff over the computer and under the computer at my feet. I just, I just couldn't do that. But, um, you know, they're just kind of like showing, and the, the shower, the shower is full of clothes. Um, so I don't get that, but, you know, hey, maybe that's not a shower that people use <laughs> and they needed the space, you know. So it was just a really interesting look if you ever want to look at, um, you know, why people do this. And, and they have, you know, comments and interviews from the people whose homes they went into and stuff. Oh, and they also talk about collections. Collections is a whole other subject, isn't it? That require their own sacred space. Um, and at the same time, we don't realize that they look like little shrines, little cluttered sh shrines sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's nice, but sometimes we don't actually see them the way um, that other people see our collections. So I'm not sure about this. Sometimes people keep things on things or in areas where they can't use the area that it was intended for like this couch here that's you know got stuff all over it so people can't sit there my mom used to keep stuff all over the table the kitchen table and so when you wanted to you know in her later years when you wanted to sit down and have a meal you had to clear a space you know to sit and have a meal and that was uh, something that just stayed with me. Oh, they give you demographics and things about, you know, the people that they studied, which is really interesting. So if you ever feel like reading something of interest when it comes to, you know, stuff and people keeping stuff, Life at Home, the 21st Century, 32 Families Open Their Doors, a very good book. It's definitely evident that people have too much stuff these days. We all have so much stuff and it would be great to declutter and to concentrate on the stuff that is really important to us. What is it that we really need? What is it we really don't need? I think that um, this month, and I'm gonna do another video on the uh, no spend month as far as that goes, but as far as the decluttering challenge, this has been really good for me and really good for my family. Um, the kids have also been decluttering their bedrooms this month as well, and that has been the biggest help. So I'm gonna let you go. How is your decluttering uh, challenge doing this month? Did you have a good week? Did you get rid of a lot of stuff? Did you make some new spots? One of the things that I'm finding in, the, uh, in this challenge is I can't, I can't really go out and buy a whole lot of organizational systems because of my no spend challenge right now, but I am reusing a lot of things that I have already on hand and I'm just using them in a better way and more efficient way. So um, what kinds of insights are you finding in going through this decluttering challenge? All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. I hope that you are having a wonderful weekend. I'll see you soon.